It's been six years in the making, and now South Africa is hosting the biggest football party in the world. Welcome to Africa Business Reports. My name is Komla Dumont, coming to you this month from Johannesburg, South Africa, and World Cup 2010. Billions of dollars have been spent on new stadia, new roads, new airports. The World Cup is not just a sporting event, it's a major economic event as well. But after the trophy's been lifted and all the fans have gone home, what's next for South Africa? Also in this program, war and peace, the boom in South Africa's defense industry. Fraying around the edges, is Zambia's textile industry unraveling? Taking the vow why Nigeria's wedding industry is a big money proposal. Africa is famous for its textiles. You talk about Ashoke, you talk about Kente, you know exactly what I mean. But manufacturers of textiles on the continent are coming under increased pressure, not just because of cheap imports from Asia, but also the second-hand markets as well. Kennedy Gondwe reports on the situation in Zambia. Zambia has a rich cultural heritage. Events like this bridal party are a chance to dress up and celebrate the color, diversity, and richness of African design. But traditional fabrics and prints like the ones seen on these party goers are disappearing fast. The outfit I'm wearing is called Musisi. It's a combination of a skirt and a top. It is being worn by women and it has no age limit. Second-hand clothes are cheap. If you go to Salaula today, you can find something for one pin. But if you go to a shop, you cannot find an attire for one pin. Like in many African countries, Zambia's textile industry is struggling to compete against an influx of cheap clothing. It's coming from the mass market factories of Asia, but also from well-meaning Western charities who are flooding much of Africa with donations of used clothing. But the effect in both cases is the same. It's left local designers hurting. With the cultural importance placed on textile prints and designs, one would have thought that Zambia has got a vibrant textile industry. Unfortunately, not all is rosy with the sector. Donated Western clothes, locally known as Salaula, quickly find their way to the streets where they sell at huge discount to locally produced garments. They can be seen on Zambians everywhere from big company bosses to the humblest office cleaner. In the 1980s, it was thriving. I mean, you were talking about 140 companies employing close to about 25,000 people, and contributing within the manufacturing sector, probably around 18 to 20 percent uh, of the manufacturing sector GDP. Uh, today, I think we have, a, we have a big problem because you're talking about less than 50 companies, most of them which are struggling. Many Zambian designers are finding that the most effective way to run their business now is by working from home, selling goods directly to a handful of loyal clients. This is what Charity Ngoma has chosen to do. There are so many challenges that we face. Uh, of course, uh, Zambia uh, has no manufacturing companies in terms of fabric. They've all closed down. So uh, w most of the fabrics which uh, we use are imported, but they sell in local shops. And the same shops are very few. We have very few shops uh, in town which sell the materials that we want. So with Zambia's textile industry hanging by a thread, what does the future hold? The government admits it's a problem. We don't have the market size, the capacity to be able to produce. So economies of scale still remain a challenge. And that is why, at the regional level, we are saying, why don't we get Sadiq, Komesa, and the East African community be collapsed into one huge market block? Because unless you have a size of a market, it becomes unprofitable for a chap to set up a textile industry only to sell to a million people. But clamping down on cheap imports presents problems of its own. For many of the poorest Zambians, cheap Chinese garments are now their only option if they are to dress themselves. And with a growing shift towards Western-style clothing, particularly among the young, the future could see Zambia's vibrant textile become exclusive attire, worn only.
for celebrations like this one. For Africa Business Report, this is Kennedy Gondwe in Lusaka. Now in many parts of Africa, there are three big social events on the calendar. There's the birth, there's the death, and then there's the wedding. And in Nigeria, they do it big. Mark Edo reports on why the wedding has become such a huge money spinner in the West African powerhouse. One bride, one groom, but thousands of guests. In a country where business is booming, no business booms bigger than the happy couple industry, where weddings mean no expense spared. Some of the most expensive nuptials are handled by this former beauty queen turned wedding planner. The girls wear something like this. Mm -hmm. This is what they look like. So you walk in and you see them in this combo, nicely dressed with their hair pieces up so high. Looking like princesses. Yes, so you have this, and then you, this, the whole hall will be coordinated with these colors as well. You have this she showed us around her warehouse, stocked with everything for the perfect wedding. I would rate my country, where you are right now, Nigeria, as number one in terms of um, how elaborate and how far they, they can go in spending in terms of weddings compared to anywhere else in the world. I would say on an average wedding, you would spend about $100,000. Well, I would say between $100,000 and $250,000 is what people spend in this part of town. But the most I've seen, the highest I've seen that I have had to work with is a million dollars. These pyramids were used to hold the lights at a recent wedding. There are about 200 of them here. Nigerian weddings are indeed sumptuous affairs. And in fact, when two Nigerians get together to tie the knot, it's not two individuals getting married. It's two families, two extended families. That means a lot of people turn up. In fact, people in the business here believe that Nigerian weddings pull in at least 2,000 guests. Frank Osodi is one of the top wedding dress designers in Nigeria. It's not the normal white and the cream anymore. We do, here we do silver, we do grey, we've done uh, bond gold, we've done light brown, we've done all sorts. So it's, um, it's, it's now, I mean, all the, everything about wedding gowns has changed, all the barriers have been broken and the revolution is in. 20 year old sewing machines churn out new dresses for new brides. The average gown costs at least 300,000 naira. That's $2,000, a huge sum in Nigeria. In Nigeria, dressing as a way of life. We express ourselves in the way we dress, in the way we celebrate. So when it comes to celebration, birthday parties, and most especially weddings, we spare nothing to make it happen, to make it joyous and make it, you know, really be. Well, it's, it may never happen again. You don't need to survive tomorrow. So for that very moment, for you and for those who are coming, it has to be big. I don't, I don't know how it happens anywhere else, but in Nigeria, we spend a lot of money to be happy. One day we did a wedding. Dili Momodu has made a fortune from weddings in his magazine, Ovation. You pay to be in the magazine, and you pay for a copy of the magazine. The truth of the matter is that three things are most important to Nigerians. The day you were born, the day you get married, and the day you die. So we chose the middle, the wedding. You know, every, the dream of every Nigerian woman is to find that perfect husband. So when they eventually find that man, they are ready to spend anything. It's a huge carnival, trust me. And <laughs> It starts now with event planners. The event planner sits down. You tell them you want a guest of 2,000. If you send out 2,000 invitation cards, you can be sure about 3,000 or 4,000 will turn up. And everything is free. Food, drinks, champagne, flowing. Everything is free. And the way I joke about it is that it could be a form of social security because people look out for those weddings every weekend. People go there and have free food. They even, sometimes they give out this type of dress I'm wearing now to people, to family members who are not so rich. So maybe that's a kind of social security after all. So in Nigeria, when you say, I do, it also means I spend. Mark Edo, 
Africa Business Report, Lagos, Nigeria. And that story brings us to the end of this edition of Africa Business Report, coming to you this month from South Africa 2010 and the city of Johannesburg. If you want to find out more about any of the stories in this edition of the program, visit our website. It's bbc.com slash Africa Business Report. And if you want to see pictures from this edition or any other edition, visit our Facebook page as well. I'll leave you with some sights and sounds of the city they call Josie. I'm Komla Dumont. Goodbye. I'm Sean Fletcher, live in South Africa as Brazil attempt to make it two wins out of two when they take on Ivory Coast at Soccer City in the World Cup. Goals are disappearing fast. The outfit I'm wearing is called Musisi. It's a combination of a skirt and a top. It has been worn by women and it has no age limit. Second-hand clothes are cheap. If you go to Salaula today, you can find something for one pin. But if you go to a shop... It's been six years in the making, and now South Africa is hosting the biggest football party in the world. Welcome to Africa Business Reports. My name is Komla Dumont, coming to you this month from Johannesburg, South Africa, and World Cup 2010. Billions of dollars have been spent on new stadia, new roads, new airports. The World Cup is not just a sporting event, it's a major economic event as well. But after the trophy's been lifted and all the fans have gone home, what's next for South Africa? Also in this program, war and peace, the boom in South Africa's defense industry. Fraying around the edges, is Zambia's textile industry unraveling? Taking the vow, why Nigeria's wedding industry is a big money proposal. Africa is famous for its textiles. You talk about Ashoke, you talk about Kente, you know exactly what I mean. But manufacturers of textiles on the continent are coming under increased pressure, not just because of cheap imports from Asia, but also the second-hand market as well. Kennedy Gondwe reports on the situation in Zambia. Zambia has a rich cultural heritage. Events like this bridal party are a chance to dress up and celebrate the color, diversity, and richness of African design. But traditional fabrics and prints like the ones seen on these party